All right, so let's work another problem. Um, so the last one was pretty straightforward. The way that we got to K was that we knew one of the equilibrium concentrations of our product, and so we could solve for X in that way. Let's try this next one. It says, here's my reaction. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this out just because I write big, and that way I can um, do this. I've got A plus B goes to AB. And I can put this like that and like that. Okay. So it says here that I have an equilibrium constant, uh, equilibrium constant of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. And what is our equilibrium constant going to be? It's going to be the concentration of my products, AB, times the concentration of A, times the concentration of B, which is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3, because that is given to me. Now, if one molar of A and two molar of B are allowed to reach equilibrium, that means that these are my initial concentrations. They are not at equilibrium yet. They are allowed to reach equilibrium. What are the values? So basically, I'm going to have uh, A and B initially, and I'm going to have to find out what they are, their concentrations are at the end of the reaction. So let's do that. So basically, I know that my concentration of A initially is one molar, B is two molar, and because, again, AB was not mentioned, we're going to make the assumption that it was zero. Again, I've got a change that happens, and the change is re related to the stoichiometry of the reaction. If I call the change X, then this is going away, so that's minus x because my reaction is going in this direction. This is also minus x, and this one's going to be plus x. So the equilibrium concentration is going to be 1 minus x, 2 minus x, and x. Now, let's plug all this in because that's all the information I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that Kc is x divided by 1 minus x times 2 minus x, which is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. All I did is I put these in to this expression. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, which you are allowed to use on the AP test, um, you can plug this in. However, you may have to solve on the multiple choice portion of the test the, the equilibrium values um, using the assumption method. Because if you look in here, I'm going to get a quadratic equation. And so to solve without a calculator, you're not going to be able to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some assumptions that are going to allow us to bypass a quadratic equation and solve it in a, better, in a more simplified way. So if this is my value, what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, we're going to make the assumption, and you can usually look at k. Notice that k here is really small. If you have a k that is at 10 to the minus 3 or less, you're pretty much assured that your this assumption is going to work. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that x is so small because really this value tells you um, that you're very much reactant heavy. But in comparison to this, it's super small. So it says based on the very small k value, x must be very small. So we can say the following. We're going to assume that x is going to go away here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my equation and I'm going to say this x, we have to keep this one because we can't make that zero, right? Or you're you don't have a, a reasonable expression. But we can assume that these are zero. When I do that, that means I get x is equal to 2 divided by 3.4. So I'm going to write that out over here. This is k is equal to x divided by 2 um, times 3.4 times 10 to the minus 3. And when I do that, I find out that x is this. And it is really small. Now, what you can do here is you can test this using what's called the 5% rule. Um, 
you can um, say, well, once I find my answer, is this less than 5% of 1? Or is this less than 5% of 2? Because that's what we assumed up here, that it was really small. And this value, in order for this assumption to hold, has to be 5% or less than that. And this value has to be 5% or less than that. And it is, so the assumption is good. Once I do that, then I can go right back up here and plug this X value in here, and I get these values. Um, and that gives me my equilibrium values for all three of the species.